Today I'm going to show you how you can add artificial intelligence into your Next.js apps using Langchain and the OpenAI APIs. We're going to do this by showing how I added it into my side project, Cooking with Clerk, that you can put in a couple of ingredients and perhaps a theme, and it will generate three different recipes that you could use to cook dinner for your family. The first thing you want to do is go to platform.openai.com. Now, if you have an OpenAI account, like you've used ChatGPT before, you can just sign on here with the same account, or you can click the sign up button here, which will let you sign up. I'm already authorized with my Google account, so I'm gonna click there and complete sign in with that. Now, once you log in, you'll be dropped into this view that has a bunch of documentation and tutorials on how you can quickly get up and running. However, in the upper left-hand corner, if you hover over this icon here, you should get a drop-down where you can create a project or use your pers existing personal project. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project here just for the sake of this demo and say cooking too. You can see I already have a cooking with clerk project, but that's okay. We can start with something fresh. Okay, so once the project is created, let's go ahead and hover over the same thing and drop down to API keys. And let's go ahead and create a new secret key. It's going to ask for the name of a key. We'll say uh, cooking with clerk too. And I'm going to leave the permissions to all. So basically it has access to everything inside of the account and click create secret key. Now you are presented with the API key, but make sure you copy this down now as you're not gonna be able to see it again in the future. I'm gonna go ahead and click copy and then click done. Now let's head over to VS Code and start wiring up our application in order to allow us to generate recipes. Before we go into the code, I decided that I wanted to show off the application just to show you the current state that it's in. So I have the form here and I can type in a garlic, uh, chicken, pasta, Italian, themed just like in the intro of this video but if i click generate ideas nothing happens that's because although the form is here nothing is actually wired up that will cause anything to hit open ap open ai's api in order to generate a recipes all right so before we actually hop over into the code let's go ahead and install link chain as a dependency and we're going to install the open ai variants since that's what we're going to be using to power this tool so i'll type in npm install at Langchain forward slash open AI. And I already have this installed, so it's not gonna do anything or if anything, it might update my packages. But once this is finished, we can move on to exploring the code. Okay, so here is the only page that is part of this entire project. It is page.tsx, which is at the root of the URL. Let's walk through the code here just to explain a little bit what's going on. So, so I've got a couple of things pre-set up. First off, I'm using Shad CN in order to create elements like the input and the button, but also to display the cards that you saw in the intro of this video. So all of this is already pre-configured and set up. I have a loading spinner component that I'm using to show whether or not something is loading, whether the, the application is waiting for recipes to come back. And then I also have use state that's being imported because I have a couple of state objects here. So the first state is the prompt. This is what accepts the value for the text box where we type in uh, the, different rest, the different ingredients we want to request from our recipe generator as well as setting it when that value changes. The second one I have is simply a loading state to determine whether or not that spinner should be displayed. And then finally, I have a state object that accepts an array of recipes that will end up being returned from our backend server action. Now, if I scroll down here a little bit, the HTML is relatively simple. We have our first block here that shows that, that form with the input and the button side by side using flex from Tailwind. I have a conditional here checking to say if the is loading value is true as part of our state up here to show the loading spinner, which you saw again in the intro. And then finally, I have a grid of these recipe cards, which uh, simply display the, the name of the recipe, the description, uh, and then also the list of ingredients that are required to make the recipe, and then the list of steps down below. This final button can more or less be ignored because it's a placeholder for a future function. But now let's go ahead and start getting thing, things wired up. We are going to first head over into our .env file, and we're gonna create an environment variable named OpenAI API key. And then we're gonna paste in the value from OpenAI. This will make this API key accessible to anything that's running on the server within Next. Next up, I'm gonna go into my app directory and I'm gonna create a new file in here named actions.ts. And then we're going to start by typing in use server. This will set up our server action. So this way, when the form is submitted, the request will be sent back to our server in order to complete this securely without actually accessing OpenAI's APIs directly from the browser. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to import the chat open AI object from Langchain. So import chat open AI from, from at Langchain slash open AI. Next, we're gonna create a new object that lets us interact with OpenAI using Langchain. So I'm gonna say uh, chat model 
equals new chat open AI. And then we're going to pass in an object. And the only thing we need that is part of this object is the API key parameter. And that is going to be set to process.end.openAI open AI API key, which is the value we set inside of our environment variables. Next up, we need to create a single function. We're going to call this generate recipe. So I'm going to export async function generate recipes. And this is going to set, accept a prompt, and that is going to be a string type. Now, if we just pass in the prompt as is, where we're just putting a comma-separated list of things that we want these recipes to, to generate, OpenAI is not going to have enough information in order to generate those recipes. So instead, we're going to modify the prompt before we pass it in. And instead of typing this all out, I'm going to go ahead and paste this value, and then we'll walk through it. So what we're doing is we're more or less kind of padding out the request that's being sent to OpenAI's APIs. So instead of just passing the prompt, we're going to update this and say generate three recipes for a prompt dish. So in this case, we pass in garlic, pasta, chicken, Italian theme dish. And then we're also going to tell OpenAI what the output should look like. So we want the output to be in a JSON array, which would be three recipes since we're asking for it. Those are going to be in an array. And each object of that array should contain a recipe name, field named name. <laughs> so the first field inside of one of those objects is going to have a name. The second one is going to be name description. Keep moving down the list. We want an array of named ingredients, named ingredients, and then an array in, of step-by-step -step instructions, named instructions. And that's going to essentially give us our, our, our data structure that we can work with back. So finally, we're going to create a new object, uh, const response equals chat model dot invoke, and then we're going to pass in our prompt. Finally, let's go ahead and console.log out the response so we can see what this looks like when it comes back. I'm going to save this, and then let's head back over to the page and start wiring this thing up. So inside, so inside my component, I'm going to add some new lines here, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to create a new function. Say async function on submit. We don't need to pass in any parameters because we're going to grab the prompt from the state object. And then the first thing we're going to do is going to set is loading is going to be true. Just to show the loading indicator while we're waiting for things to come back, we're going to say uh, await generate recipes. And you can see IntelliSense is already detecting that we have a generate recipes function that's being exported from our actions file. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And then we're going to pass in the prompt which is, again, grabbing it from the state object. And then finally, again, since we're not returning anything from that, we don't need to actually set the recipe state. So we're just going to set is loading to false, just to show that the loading is done. And then finally, in our submit button, we're going to say on click. We're going to pass in, uh, we could put an empty array function here and say on submit, like so. So when we click this button, it's going to call our on submit function, which will then in turn call the generate recipes function that is running on our server inside of a server action. And uh, let's go back into the browser and see how we're looking here. Okay, so I'm back in my browser. I still have my garlic, chicken, pasta, and Italian themed object going on here. So let's just click generate ideas. We got the loading indicator for just a moment. So that means that something happened. Let's go back into VS Code and look at the logs. I see. So we actually have a promise that's returned. And the one thing we forgot to do is we forgot to await the uh, the chat invoke. So let's go back into actions. And let's just await this as well, because we want to wait for a response to come back. And let's try this one more time. I fast forward the video a little bit, but this did take a little bit longer in order for that spinner object to disappear, which means that the actual operation executed took longer, which which ultimately means we probably are in a better place. So I'm going to go back into VS Code, and let's go ahead and open the logs and scroll down a little bit. Okay, so here is our actual object that got sent back. It's AI message. We have a serializable is true. Uh, there's some arguments here. There's this content field that we can pull back. If we keep scrolling down, there's a bunch of other information about this. However, this content right here is actually what we are most interested in because we can see if you... Uh, read past the uh, the strings and the, uh, the the pluses here, which are essentially adding new lines, that this does look remotely like a JSON structure. So if I come back in here, and let's just go ahead and say json.parse response.content. And then we're also going to type an as string because 
because there is the chance that content can be an array depending on the prompt. However, in our case, since we're asking for a JSON output, it will it should always be a string. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and let's run that operation one more time. Back in the browser, I'll click Generate Ideas. And then again, I'll fast forward the video, and then we'll move back over to VS Code. Okay, now that the response has come back, this looks a little bit more familiar to us. We have an open array, we have an object, we have the name of this garlic lemon chicken pasta, and then we also have a description, the ingredients, the instructions, just as we requested inside of our prompt. So now that we know that we're getting some kind of objects back and it's something that we can work with, let's go ahead and take this response and return it back, and then we're also going to render it inside of the UI in those cards. So I'm going to get rid of the console.log here, and then let's just go ahead and return this directly. I'll save this and then we'll go back into page.tsx and then modify this a little bit just so this way we can get the recipes in there. Let's first assign our output to uh, let R. We'll just use R for shorthand for recipes. Let R equals generate recipes. And then we're going to set recipes to R. And this should get us our cards to be rendered in front inside of the UI. So again, one last time, generate ideas. We'll wait for this to finish. And now we have an application that can be that can use AI to generate recipes based off of some simple instructions. So say for instance, I can come in here and I can say uh, steak, corn, carrots, Asian themed. Let's throw some rice in there because rice is always delicious and click generate ideas. Can probably modify the design a little bit to clear out the cards when we're waiting for new ideas. And we have three fresh recipes as we can use as ideas to cook dinner with tonight. 